And now, on location from the beautiful city of Louisville, here's your co-host, Dave Conrad. It is not unusual for the sun to shine bright on my old Kentucky home the first Saturday in May, but the first Saturday in September when it's time for University of Louisville football, it is rather unusual for the sun to shine bright. Welcome to the Howard Schnellenberger Show, and it's shining bright on Kentucky. We're at the Belvedere in downtown Louisville, still celebrating the opening season victory over Tulane. A great comeback, Howard. Well, as I told the players on the day after the game that my wife looked a little prettier, I'm sure their girlfriends looked a little prettier, the sun shines a little brighter, and the breeze smells a little, little fresher. And certainly that's what happened after the great come from behind win that uh, this football team will remember forever. When the players are looking for a payday, because you're always reinforcing hard work pays dividends. Hard work pays dividends. And they have to see something tangible like a victory like this, don't they? Well, that's true, and it's been hard coming. And, of course, that's the reason why this win was so important for this young football team. For them to come from behind a 24-point deficit, to come back and to win the football game, shows them what hard work, determination, and dedication will do. We'll be back in just a minute with more of the show. 42 to 40, a dramatic come from behind victory for the Louisville Cardinals in the season opener last Saturday, as you all know. But Howard, at halftime, it did not look like a 42 to 40 game, did it? No, and it, there was no guarantee that it was going to be a 42 to 40 uh, ball game. There was some very great concern on my part that it might be a 60 to 14 game. And that's the reason why we spent so much time uh, talking about the technical aspects of the game, along with talking about the emotional part. We did hit the emotional part very hard, but it was also important that we also straighten out some of the problems that we had. Tulane, early in the football game, used its size up front offensively to really control it. They have a great uh, front line, and they also have a great quarterback and a great wide receiver. You know, Zeno has been one of the truly great receivers for some years, and again, he demonstrated his real quality as a receiver. Uh, even though our game plan didn't change a great deal from first half to second half, obviously the performance of the team varied a great deal in that second half. Louisville was down to Tulane at one time by 24. What changed? Well, as you indicated a little earlier, uh, momentum, and the momentum was gained by the offense. I had asked the offense at halftime, stating that the defense was having real problems and that what the offense could do was not only when they got the ball to score, but to keep the ball for a period of time, keep their offense off the field. And they really responded. Uh, of the six times they had the ball the second half, our offense scored five times. Then momentum came after the scores by the offense. The crowd got into it. The defense got more into it. And a combination of all those things uh, made us play better both offensively and defensively. You had mentioned earlier about with a victory like this and a dramatic come from behind win, uh, your wife looks prettier, uh, the player's girlfriend looks prettier, the office becomes more efficient, everybody's stepping lively, all right? You can see it out of the players, especially in the fourth quarter. The reactions are quicker. They're running faster. They're running harder. Can you sense that on the sideline? Well, certainly we can. And, you know, that's the real job of the head football coach is not allow those depressions when momentum has swung the other way to last uh, too long, to do something to make it turn around. And when we do get momentum, to rally the troops, the troops in turn to rally the fans, and to keep everything going as long as we can. And we had it going there for uh, a quarter and a half. Global football program was, was, was brought back by the players, the commitment in the second half, because you were flirting with disaster, weren't you? Obviously, we were. it was a time when it could have gone the other way, and had it gone the other way, it would have been a very, very major setback. But like they say, uh, like Casey Single used to say, it's never over until it's over, and obviously it wasn't over until the final whistle.
prepared, you know, real hard, you know, in camp. When we got back over here, we prepared. And just everything just came together. You know, we started off pretty slow first half, but after that, you know, we came in here, we got the pep talk that we needed, and we just went out there and played football. We played football where we're supposed to be. I was just thinking that we need it, and I wasn't going to be denied. So as I was running, I just tuned everything out and just got myself in the end zone. How it's many hard people did you run over that time? <sighs> they might have been four or five. I, I just was running, you know. I don't count them. I just run over We started out in the second half giving up seven points. That's when I really realized what was going to happen in the game. Came off on the sidelines, and you know, that's probably the worst thing you could do is giving up seven points when you're down by 17. And uh, I looked at everybody, and everybody just, there, there wasn't one head down. There, the eyes, there, there was still the eyes there. I mean, everybody, the look was there, and, and it just felt, it made everybody feel that way. It, it wasn't no talking about it. It was just the look. and. Uh, we just did what we had to do then. This was a validation, a certification, a blessing on all their work, all their endeavors that uh, certified that through hard work and playing together and giving them yourself that you can, you can achieve. You can play good when you're behind. You can win when you're, everybody thinks you're going to lose. We came down here, we know we started to put our heads down, but, you know, Coach Nellenberg, you know, he got us together, you know, because, you know, he's a winner all the way. And we just came together, and just got everything right, and we just went out there the second half, and we played Kicked some football, tail. And that's all we did. <laughs> I don't think there'll be ever time that we'll go out there again and, and think, get behind and think we don't have a chance to win. From the Belvedere, from downtown Louisville, we'll be right back to the Hallis Snellenberger Show right after these messages. I'm coming up, gonna be a bright new day. There is a tremendous spirit in this community, a new Together spirit of competitive. What we can do. My approach to television is a lot Showing you a critical play, hopefully the play that helps us win the football game, but in some cases it'll be the play that kept them from winning the game. This week we're going to show you that play right at the end of the game where Gruden rolled out and threw the ball to George Williams. 
where each week we're going to have a group of youngsters coming in from Pop Warner or from other uh, Little League teams to help us demonstrate the play. And this week from Linden, we've got the uh, Linden Packers. Uh, they're part of the Pop Warner uh, Football League, and they'll be here to help demonstrate this particular play to you. Come on up, guys. Right here, gather up, gather up, right around here. Come here, come here, come here, come here, right here. All right, down on one knee. All right, what I want to show you now is the uh, play that we're going to be demonstrating for the people here today. Uh, we call this play Fake 38 Solid Naked. And of course, naked means that the quarterback is going to be rolling out away from the play without any interference in front of him. It's kind of a play that we just trying to fool the defense completely. But what we're going to do is line up in what we call East Tight Wing. That's with that's with uh, our near end in here tight and our other tight end over here. Uh, this is our wing in here close, our quarterback, our fullback, and our halfback. So we're going to fake 38 solid, and then the quarterback is going to come out naked. George is going to make this number 42 here think that he's blocking him, and then he's going to break for the corner and hoping that this cornerback, number three here, is going to come up to try to catch it from behind. Jay comes out, encourages him to rush, and then throws it over his head for the touchdown. And that's exactly what happened, and it was good for the six points, and that allowed us to win the game over the uh, two-lane green wave. Big play, pivotal play, game-winning play. What we're going to do is we're all going to get down on the ball, and we're going to run 38. Now, when I say 38, I want you to straight block, you to straight block, you to straight block, and I want you to come back in here like you're going to block this linebacker if he runs through here. Danny, you're responsible for 39. Brian, you're responsible for uh, Martin right here. You all, you're going to fake for the ball. And then I'm going to show my quarterback what we're going to do. Hey! I get the ball. And I fake to this guy here, and then I raise up, and I hit my receiver right there, OK? Jacob, Jacob, you can't go too fast. Now, you got to make this, you got to make Jeff think you're going to block him. So Jeff, you're a little deeper. You step right in here, and Jacob goes to get the, to make the tackle, and then you come right out here real easy, real easy right here. Look over the left shoulder. Ready? That's perfect. Well, that's exactly the way it happened uh, Saturday night, about 10:15. The touchdown that put the Louisville Cardinals ahead to get one of the biggest wins in their history. Louisville Heisman Trophy on the Belvedere in Louisville, Kentucky. Stay with us. We'll be back in a moment with more of the Schnellenberger show. Legal blocks. But we also had a few illegal blocks that the officials called and penalized either us or them. We'd like to show you now what's the difference between a legal block and an illegal block as shown here by our official crew. All right, now what we're talking about now is the ability of this offensive back to block this on-rushing lineman in a pass situation. This man must keep his hands within the framework of his body, and he can keep them open and contact this man within the framework of his body. Here's the rushing lineman, and you're block blocking legally. That's legal. The framework of the body, here to here, and includes the sides. This man goes beyond him, and when he does, he turns, and this man takes an extra shot in the middle of the back. You know what that is? That's a clip. That's not illegal use of the hands because he struck him in the back. So therefore, that's a clip, and you'll see that signal. When they come in and block, if he maintains contact, come in, he maintains contact with him and follows him all the way around, and the man rolls, and he still maintains contact, we have no foul. Well, Coach, now that we understand what is a legal block and an illegal block, I'm sure the players will not have any problems with flags being thrown tonight against Cincinnati. I hope you're right. Let's talk about the Cincinnati Bearcats. They had an impressive 
opening season despite the fact that they lost performance against Rutgers. Well, Cincinnati is a football team that has defeated us twice. The first uh, year, 1985, they ran us out of the ballpark, and we shouldn't even have been with them. Last year, we had a very competitive football game up in uh, their stadium. Uh, we had a chance to win it in the fourth quarter, but we weren't man enough to take it and put it in. We had a penalty, and then we didn't make it happen. So this is going to be a real good barometer as to how far we've come and to see whether we now are man enough to overcome a, what I think is a very solid Bearcat offense and defensive football team. Speaking of the Bearcats offense, their quarterback is the all-time passing leader now at Cincinnati, Danny McCoy. Yes, and they're touting him as a Heisman Trophy candidate, and I'm sure the loss last week didn't help. However, he still played an awfully good game, and he still has great potential. He's hurt us every year that we've played, and he's a pure passion-type quarterback. They have a receiver named Height that's uh, his favorite target, and they their offense is strictly streamlined for a quarterback like McCoy. A lot of wide receivers uh, spread us out try to get the ball to the backs any way they can to allow him to throw the ball and make things happen in the passing game. If we're going to be successful, we're going to have to get an awfully good pass rush on him, and then we're going to have to have different coverages to try to take height away. Howard, their defense can't be shabby. They'll hold uh, Rutgers to what? Was it 10 points? 10 points, and you know, last year we didn't hold them anything close to 10 points. Rutgers is a big, solid, tough football team. And I'm very surprised that Cincinnati was able to uh, stay that close with them. Uh, we, on a, from an offensive standpoint, obviously have got to establish a running game. And I was pleased with the way that uh, Booker and Book Knight ran in the game. But we have to establish a tough running game to allow Jay Gruden then to fake, a, a fake play action, sprint out, bootleg, and then occasionally sit up in the pocket to get the ball to our receiver. But uh, you know, they have an experienced secondary, and uh, obviously it's going to be a, a big night for Jay. Looking forward to the game tonight in Cardinal Stadium. We'll check the high school football rankings in Kentucky in a minute. Stay with us. We'll be back with more of the Snelling Burton Show. Go Cards! Beat, Beat the Bearcats! Howard, let's bring the people up to date on what's happening in Kentucky high school football. As far as the 4A classifications, the AP poll again this week in Jefferson County has the defending state champion Tigers of St. X ranked number one. Uh, and again, Mike Glazer doing a super job over at St. X. Mail is second. Trinity is third. Mail hasn't been scored on yet. In state 4A football, Henderson County is number one with Boone County second, Boyd County third. Well, Randy Reese is a coach over at uh, Henderson, and again, he keeps his team in contention most all the time. Owen Hawk Hulk at, at uh, Boone County and Ed Van Hoos is at uh, Boyd County and these are all premier coaches from within the state. It should not be surprising that Paducah Tillman is number one in the state in AAA because their opening season victory was against Trinity. They may have moved up a notch and pulled off a big upset. I was talking with Alan Cox. He was bringing his team up here and they were really concerned about where they were going to stay. Uh, we offered our uh, dormitory to them but uh, they found another place and Obviously, it was the right place. When they come back, they'll stay there again, I'm sure, after that win. Oh, Montgomery, some of those players do that he has on that team. Montgomery County is second. Belfry is third. That's in AAA and AA football. Mayfield, Fort Knox, and Danville are one, two, three. Joe Jagger is down at Fort Knox. What a great job he does coaching his football team. Since I've been back in Kentucky, they've been right at the top. And in Class A football in Kentucky, Pikeville, Heath, and Beechwood are the big three this week. Yes, and uh, even though there are small schools, the football in that league is getting better and better. Football in the University of Louisville League is getting better and better as we look forward to tonight's game against Cincinnati. Well, I think it is, and it's a big game for us, and it's one that uh, will allow us to win the second game in a row. Uh, it hasn't been done in a long time at the University of Louisville, and that's really the importance of that first win, the opportunity to win two in a row. Thanks for being with us. If you'd like to join us live for the taping next week, Wednesday, Theater Square at 10 o'clock in the morning in downtown Louisville. For Howard, I'm Dave Conrad. Thanks for being with us.